everyone, this is the Commander, and in today's video, I'm going to review episode 3 of Kenobi. This was a very good one. The only problem I have is that we're already halfway done with the series, so this is a really short show. And I feel like there definitely is going to have to be a second season of this. But that wouldn't make any sense because it would just be better to put it all into one season, in my opinion. So I'm just going to get started and talk about um, the main events of the show. Um, we start off on Mustafar, which is where Vader's castle is, and also where Anakin died, um, although he just turned into Vader, pretty much. Um, we get to see some of Vader's uh, cybernetics and all that kind of special stuff that he had, and then... Vader offered to uh, Reva the uh, role of Grand Inquisitor if she succeeds in hunting down Kenobi. And uh, Reva lied to Vader and said that uh, the Grand Inquisitor is killed by what's killed by Kenobi, although it's weird that uh, Vader can't sense this, or maybe he does and keeps it to himself. And then we go to the planet of Mapusa, where we find Leia and Obi-Wan, and we get to see some lore building with some mining and just the Empire on this far out planet, so it really shows how uh, wide um, the Empire's expanse is. And Obi-Wan uh, sees Anakin in its like brain on Mapusa. Um, but not in the Darth Vader armor and all of that stuff, so that would be an interesting uh, bit. And then we get to see the planet Nur Fortress Inquisitorius, it's what uh, the base is called, from Jedi Fallen Order, that's basically a big, big base where the Inquisitors are, and then some other troopers as well. So that, that was cool to see that being brought over from Jedi Fallen Order. And then we really get to see the Inquisitor competition. It's mostly just between the third and fifth sister. Um, the fourth sister is kind of just along for the ride, it seems. They've, they really haven't done much with her character. Um, she had some more screen time in this episode, but we'll see if they choose to do anything with her. Um, it's also interesting that in this show, we get the third, fourth, and fifth, uh, uh Inquisitors. I found that pretty funny. But, yeah, lots of Inquis- lots of a competition between the third and fifth. Um, and then Obi-Wan and Leia, they catch a ride on this, uh, transport to try and get them into, like, the outpost on the Puso, and they create a cover story, um, to avoid the Empire because there's stormtroopers on the transport, which was a really nerve-wracking scene for even the people watching the show, so that was very well done. And then, um, they're hopping off at this checkpoint, and the probe droid is trying to find Obi-Wan, um, but Obi shoots it down, and then the fight starts between, uh, Obi-Wan and those troopers. And then... A, an officer um, actually shoots at some stormtroopers, which is surprising, but then we learn that this officer is who Obi-Wan is looking for to get a ride off of Mapuso. It's a good character, and so she helps out Kenobi and Leia. And then we find out this new idea, it might have been from somewhere else in Star Wars, but they kind of introduced it in the series, the idea of a safe house for Jedi and the good guys, basically. Um, and we get to see that Quinlan Voss visited the safe house on the Puzo, so Quinlan is still alive. I think it's very likely that he'll be featured in this series now. Um, but it is a bit surprising, I would say, that we're halfway done with the series and we haven't seen like many cameos at all. I f feel like this show would have a lot of them, but apparently it is not, so that's very interesting. And then we get to see um, 
that uh, Kenobi senses that Vader is nearby, uh, nearby. Yes, uh, Vader is coming himself with the Inquisitors for this one, but the Inquisitors really just watch Vader's rage. Um, Vader is doing all kinds of things. He's choking people, killing people left and right, just regular civilians. Yeah, this is true Vader rage. And I kind of have a theory that Vader, like you see him in uh, Jedi Fallen Order, this and Rogue One, he's a lot more ruthless in these three series. And I think that he's maybe not as crazy in the original trilogy because he like, he knows of Luke, he, and then he like, he, he kind of gets back towards the light side a little bit, just a little bit. To kind of make him a little less crazy. So, then uh, Kenobi and Vader duel in the sands of Mapuso. And Vader throws Obi-Wan into a fire. Um, Obi-Wan gets away, though. And the traitor uh, officer... I don't know if that officer was actually once uh, part of the Empire or it's just a disguise. But that officer helps Obi-Wan out. And then Reva tried to chase Leia at the end of the episode to see what happens to Leia. A lot of Leia in this show. I think it's a good thing though. We'll just have to see. They have to do a lot in the next three episodes. Maybe we'll get some long ones. They have to kind of... Obi-Wan's still very weak at this point. Um, so Qui-Gon's going to have to call to him. That's probably going to be next episode. Um, we have to learn what happened to the Grand Inquisitor. Maybe he comes back for revenge in the sixth episode and kills Reva. I don't know, that's my theory, personally. And then, yeah, there probably going to be one more fight with Kenobi and Vader before they kind of separate from each other. And, uh, yeah, I think Vader... This is a popular theory that Vader is kind of just going to leave, leave uh, Kenobi for dead in that last duel. And then he'll be surprised when he comes back in A New Hope. So that's going to do it for this video. Please make sure to subscribe and like. And this is The Commander, signing out.